Streaming from the 22 News Broadcast Center. This is 22 News at 4 p.m. Digital Edition. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for 22 News at 4. I'm Nick Oresco. We'll get to your top four stories in just a bit. But first, a look at your weather and traffic with Storm Team Meteorologist Brian Lapis. Hey, something cool happening tonight. The Northern Lights may be visible in yeah. Massachusetts here. Yeah, you know, the Northern Lights are very elusive around here, so I wouldn't bet the farm on it. But this is our best chance to see the Northern Lights in a real long time. Some would say it's easier to forecast the weather than it is space. Agreed. I would say I would confidently agree with that. <laughs> uh, we can show you what's happening of the traffic here as we head into the late afternoon hours and uh, luckily no major problems. Just taking a quick glance here at uh, the Mass Pike and I-91 looking good. Also 391, 291 uh, Westfield a little busy as it usually is at this time of day uh, downtown and we've got the usual slowdowns with the construction right now in West Springfield. But otherwise traffic looks like it's in pretty good shape as we cruise into the the Friday evening commute. How about your Friday Friday night fun and frivolity? That's what he's trying to say. You can see here that as expected on the cool side, temperatures are in the low 60s, so we'll be cooling through the 50s as we head into the evening hours. This looks pretty ominous. A lot of rain here over New York and uh, parts of Pennsylvania. And other than a stray sprinkle, most of this is going to dissipate before it gets in here. There is the chance for a sprinkle or two this evening, but we actually get a little clearing in here overnight tonight and potentially some sunshine for the first half of the day tomorrow. We'll explain with our 22 News Storm Team forecast. Students were evacuated at the Michael E. Smith Middle School in South Hadley this morning following a bomb threat. Interim Superintendent Mark McLaughlin told 22 News a person found a bomb threat written on the boys' bathroom wall around 8.15 this morning. School officials called the police and evacuated all staff and students to Moser Elementary School. That's right across the street. The school was searched and police found nothing. The students were dismissed on a half day schedule. In a statement to 22 News, South Hadley Police Chief Jennifer Gunderson said this is the second threat at the school this week. This is very disappointing um, behavior and we're going to be working very closely with the police. We take this very seriously and uh, we will uh, consider all of our options. South Halley police are now investigating. McLaughlin expects school to be open as normal on Monday morning. Springfield Police and Massachusetts State Police conducted a joint narcotics investigation on Maple Dell Street in Springfield this morning. Investigators were seen wearing Tyvek suits and masks as items were removed from a house. A state police spokesperson told 22 News there were no arrests made and no one was hurt. The investigation is ongoing. A man was found dead in Springfield early this morning. Springfield Police spokesperson Ryan Walsh told 22 News police were called around 1.30 this morning to a gas station on Locust Street. Police found a man dead with a gunshot wound. The Springfield Police Homicide Unit and the Hamden DA's office are currently investigating. It's all fake. The whole case is fake. The judge is corrupt. Trump's hush money trial continues as prosecutors say they could possibly put the case to rest next week. His former assistant continued her testimony today along with multiple paralegals and the two telecommunication employees who confirmed phone records as part of their testimony. The star witness of this case, Michael Cohen, is expected to testify Monday. He is accused of giving adult film star Stormy Daniels $130,000 to stay silent after a sexual encounter with Trump in 2006. Before the 2016 presidential election, Trump denies any wrongdoing there. Let's bring Back in 22 News from Team Meteorologist Brian Lapis for a look at what we can expect for tonight. Yeah, it's not going to be a uh, gold medal winning uh, uh, weather night for us to start off the weekend. But uh, for the most part, we're going to escape any significant rain here tonight. Here it is, our 22 News Storm Team Skycast. There could be a scattered sprinkle or light shower here through about 8 o'clock tonight. Then we actually get a little bit of clearing here overnight. Notice here at uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. There'll be some patchy fog, but otherwise clear air, rising sunshine and bright for the first half of the day. Then clouds will close back in 
There'll be a breeze out of the east northeast here tomorrow, and there's the chance for a few scattered sprinkles here uh, during the afternoon hours. High temperatures will be in the low 60s. Weather does not look much better for Mother's Day. We'll update that forecast for you tonight on TV on 22 News at 5. This is something we mentioned off the top for the first time since 2005. Our planet is under a severe geomagnetic storm watch, which means the northern lights could be visible right here from Massachusetts. You'll want to find a dark sky from around 10 tonight to 4 o'clock tomorrow morning and look to the northern horizon. There may be even a better chance of seeing them tomorrow night, but some clouds could be in the forecast. Hey, let's bring back in meteorologist Brian Lapis. This is a cool thing. It's not guaranteed, of course, but still something cool for our state. Yeah, and you know, we have seen the northern lights here uh, in the past, but it's really the northern lights are very elusive, and I've got a graphic here that I'm going to show you right now, and as Nick mentioned, this is the first time in a long time that we've had this level of a geomatic, geomagnetic storm forecast uh, for the, the Pioneer Valley, and for, for that matter, for the Earth. <laughs> uh, you can see that it peaks overnight tonight. So as Nick was mentioning, best chances to see the aurora, aurora borealis would be in the middle of the night tonight through about sunrise. And of course, this forecast is very fluid, so stay tuned. We'll keep you updated to, for our chances to see the northern lights during the second half of the weekend as well. Brian, cool stuff. Thank you. Caitlin Clark made her home debut with the Indiana Fever last night in a preseason game against the Atlanta Dream. The superstar from Iowa was the number one overall pick in the WNBA draft. 13,000 people were there at the Fieldhouse in Indiana to watch. That's nearly three times larger than the average attendance for a regular season home game last year. Clark had 12 points, leading the Fever to a 83-80 win over Atlanta. Now for a look at what we're working on for 22 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. The Jones Library project in Amherst remains uncertain after the only bid is $7 million more than they estimated. Find out what the committee plans to do with that. And we will have full statements from UMass Amherst groups following the no confidence vote against Chancellor Javier Reyes. Plus full coverage of a heartwarming celebration for a boy who saved the lives of 11 people. Quick check of traffic before we go. Uh, looking pretty good. We're green here, so normally flowing traffic 91, the Mass Pike 291, 391 looking good, and just the usual slowdowns in the urban areas here as we approach the evening commute. We'll have details on the weekend's weather on 22 News at 5. Thank you for joining us for 22 News at 4 o'clock. Join us on TV starting at 5. You can, of course, get all your local news and weather updates anytime on our website and the 22 News app.